Thank you, Mr. Akasaka, for your warm welcome. As Mr. Akasaka said, I am a Gungaloo man from central Queensland, and on behalf of the Gungaloo, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land where we are meeting here today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to their elders and their ancestors. And as is the way in Australia, I'd like to make a couple of commitments. One is, while I'm on Wurundjeri land, I will respect their culture and their country. And I undertake to leave it in the same condition it was when I came here. I'd also like to acknowledge my distinguished fellow speakers at this closing session today, as well as all other distinguished people in this room. And as an Australian and an Indigenous Australian, I'd also like to acknowledge guests from around the world, and in particular, my Indigenous brothers and sisters from other countries who are here today. As Mr Akasaka has pointed out, I am the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Commissioner of the Australian Human Rights Commission. For those of you who may not know, the Commission is the major human rights institution in Australia. It is established under the Paris principles and is government funded, but in line with those principles is completely independent from government. And my role requires me to monitor the human rights of Australia's Indigenous peoples and to report to our federal parliament on those matters at least once a year. Can I start by saying I am continually reminded by the critical need for global action on global issues like poverty that affects all nations in some way or another, and in particular the importance of global frameworks such as the Millennium De Declaration and the Millennium De Development Goals and the underlying human rights principles upon which they are based. The message is getting louder and louder throughout the world that poverty and inequity are a human rights issue of universal concern. And I have to observe from this that there are common problems that face us all, even though our political circumstances and the culture from where we come and work may vary, may vary enormous, enormously. And what I'd like to say do today is walk a somewhat difficult line of identifying some of those common problems or themes that I've observed and link it back to the Australian NGO initiative, the Close the Gap campaign for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health equality. The campaign was inspired by the same sort of thinking that is behind the Millennium Declaration and those goals. It was based on the fundamental recognition that the poor state of Indigenous health in this country was indeed a human rights issue. You have heard from Barbara Flick, Nicol and others at this conference that there is a life expectancy gap in Australia of between seven, 10 to 17 years between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. And behind that figure, there is a mass of other statistical divides in relation to specific conditions and in relation to the social determinants of health, significantly higher rates of chronic and communicable diseases, and poorer infant and maternal health, for example, to link this campaign to the MDG subject matters. Covering the kind of inequity suffered by many of my Indigenous brothers and sisters populations throughout the world. And it was this relative poverty that was an issue here. Australia is like two countries a low or medium developed country, Indigenous Australia, nested inside a developed one. And without this disaggregation, the poor state of Indigenous health became invisible. Numerically, we are about 2.5 per cent of a population that enjoys some of the best health and longest life expectations in the world. And so the Australian government did not see its relationship to the MDGs in terms of that other country nestled within. It looked outward. It saw its main roles as providing aids to other, the poor countries that are over there. But like the MDGs, the idea of the Close the Gap campaign was to bring this inequality to an end in, a, in as short a time as possible, with an unprecedented effort to achieve Indigenous health equality guided by a national plan incorporating ambitious 
yet realistic, measurable targets. The Close the Gap campaign's goal is to close the 10 to 17 year life expectancy gap by 2030. And this broad goal encompasses sub-targets relating to subject matters of MDGs 4, 5 and 6 in relation to reducing child mortality, improving maternal health and combating disease. The campaign aims to do this through the, the adoption of, by Australian governments of a comprehensive national plan of action that is properly resourced and has the goal of achieving that health equality target by 2030. And I think the role of planning is crucial in any exercise like the campaign or achieving the MDGs in any country or region within a country. And I've been impressed, for example, by some of the large scale planning that is needed to, for example, deliver polio elimination program, programs in India, as was highlighted in a workshop here. And such planning is obviously vital if targets like the MDGs are to be met. The campaign's approach, like the MDGs, is based on empowerment. It is respectful of culture and it is aligned with the human rights framework, with a particular but not exclusive focus on the right to health. Hence, the plan I have mentioned had to be developed and implemented by Australian governments working in partnerships with Indigenous peoples and their representatives. And this is another theme that has emerged here at this conference, partnership, empowerment, ownership of programs by the people for whom they are designed. And these are vital elements of any poverty alleviation effort. Working together is another theme that has come through so strongly at this conference. And like so many of the initiatives highlighted here, the Close the Gap campaign is essentially a group of Australian NGOs working together and offering leadership. And in particular, the Indigenous NGOs, including the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation, who is presented here, and the Indigenous professional bodies, the dentists, the doctors, the nurses, the psychologists, and so on. And importantly, our key, key mainstream health bodies, the doctors and specialist professional bodies, have also participated, as has international NGOs such as Oxfam and some of our homegrown NGOs such as the Fred Hollows Foundation, which does such fantastic work both here and overseas. And to date, 140,000 Australians have formally pledged their support for this campaign. And we were particularly pleased that the Australian Rugby League, one of our major sporting bodies, have joined the campaign, dedicating an annual round of matches to close the gap branded matches with messages about Indigenous health that are broadcast to millions along with their matches. But persuading governments to make the investments needed has been our primary goal. And in that regard, the campaign has enjoyed significant success, although there is still some way to go. In August 2007, the Australian Labor Party in federal opposition signalled its support for the Close the Gap approach in its Indigenous Affairs election platform. And following the election of a Labor government later that year, many aspects of that big campaign became official government policy. In December 2007, the Council of Australian Governments, an extra constitutional body within the, which Australian governments tackle issues of national importance, adopted the campaign targets to achieve Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander expect life expectation equality by 2030 and to halve the mortality rate of under five Indigenous uh, children by 2018. In fact, by 2009, a total of six COAG Close the Gap targets had been announced. Two are health specific, two relate to employment and two relate to education. A touchstone of this campaign is the Close the Gap campaign statement of intent signed by the Prime Minister and the Minister for Health and Ageing and the Opposition Leader in 2008. And this document, like the Millennium De Declaration and the MDGs, contains goals and principles for bringing Indigenous health equality to an end in a short time. And since the bulk of our state and territory governments have also signed up, it is now a truly national document. Of course, implementation remains an issue just as it does for the MDGs. For while the campaign has provided the impetus 
for almost $5 billion in Close the Gap branded programs to alleviate poverty and improve health. Significant elements of the campaign, such as national planning processes, are yet to effectively begin. But there is no doubt that the campaign has made an enormous difference, bringing billions of dollars of resources to Indigenous health and fundamental, fundamentally reframing the conversation in this country, just as the MDGs have done internationally. So the message I want to leave you with is one of hope and empowerment. Do not underestimate what you can do, and do not leave it up to or wait for governments. Poverty, whether absolute or relative, whether within our nations or outside, is everyone's business. And with tools like the Millennial, Millennium De Declaration and the Millennium Development Goals, we can make a difference. Mr Akasaka, I look forward to hearing how the conference feeds into the MDG Summit later this September. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.